is called a Wasson card sorting test. It is one of the many given out to test a social biological hypothesis, which is covered in a book called The Adapted Mind. The central premise of the adapted mind is that there is a universal human nature, but that this universality exists primarily at the level of evolved psychological mechanisms, not of expressed cultural behaviors. A second premise is that these evolved psychological mechanisms are adaptations constructed by natural selection over evolutionary time. A third assumption made by most of the contributors is that the evolved structure of the human mind is adapted to the way of life of hunter-gatherers and not necessarily to our modern circumstances. Now on to the test. Your goal is to see if in the case of the following rule there are any exceptions. If the card has D on one side, it has 3 on the other. The cards are D, F, 3, and 7. Now which cards do you need to turn over in order to discover if this is true? Pause the video and take your time. Okay, done? That test was given to college students, most of which got it wrong. The next and final test is much, much easier. We will shift slightly the content of the question. The structure, however, will remain the same. You are a bouncer at a bar and your job depends on not letting any underage customers drink beer. The cards have information about age on one side and what the patron is drinking on the other. The cards are drinking beer, drinking coke, 25 years old, and 16 years old. Which cards you need to turn over? Again, you can pause the video if you think you need to. Done? Most people got this question right. The answer is like the first one, the first and the last card. So D and 7 for the first one and drinking beer and 16 on the last one. The second question is much easier. But why? Why would it be easier? It's basically the same question. Sure there was a shift in content but the structure remained the same. One told you that if a card has D on one side it has 3 on the other. The second told you that if drinking beer is on one side then over the age of 21 is on the other. They both then asked you what cards you'd have to look under to see if this is true. Perplexing, isn't it? Well, the answer is, according to the hypothesis that the Wasson card tests have been constructed to test, is evolution. You see, the easy cases are all cases that are readily interpreted as tasks of patrolling a social contract, or, in other words, cheater detection. Social contracts are agreements that people take up for mutual benefit. Some examples of social contracts are laws against stealing, murder, and tax evasion. They can also be personal things like a marriage or a promise between friends. The evolutionary benefit of this adaptation is obvious, but I thought that this test was interesting because it shows that cheater detection is hardwired into our brains, into our thinking. I first read about this in a book called Darwin's Dangerous Idea by Daniel Dennett, so I think it's appropriate for, for me to end this video by quoting him on the subject. Once upon a time, there was no morality at all. There was life, there were human beings, and they even had language, so they had memes. We can presume that they had words, and hence memes, for good and bad, but not ethical good and bad. The notions of right and wrong, justice and injustice, have there no place. So although they could distinguish a good spear from a bad spear, a good supper from a bad supper, a good hunter, an expert killer of supper, from a bad hunter, who scared away the prey, they had no concept of a good or just person, a moral person, or a good act, a moral act, or their contraries, villains and vices. They could appreciate that some people were more dangerous than others, or better fighters, or more desirable mates, but their perspective went no further than that. They had no concept of right or wrong, because they are qualities that relate to men in society, not in solitude. Hobbes called this epoch in our history the state of nature, because it resembled in its most important features the plight of all the other animals in the wild to this day. In the state of nature there is no place for industry, because the fruit thereof is uncertain, no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all continual fear and danger of a violent death. 
and the lives of man solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. And then, one fine day, a mutation happened to arise. One day, when yet another conflict arose, just like all the others that had come before it, something new happened to happen. Instead of persisting in the myopical, selfish policies of mutual defection and distrust that had reigned in the past, these particularly lucky competitors hit upon a new idea, cooperation for mutual benefit. They formed a social contract. Whereas before there had been families, or herds, or tribes, there was the birth of a different kind of group, a society. This was the birth of civilization, and the rest, as they say, is history.